Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video I want to take a look into projection in the M formula language. In the documentation you can read that the field access expression is used to select a value from a record, or to project a record or table to one with fewer fields or columns. But what does that mean, and how can you use it? Let's go to the Power Query Editor. Prepare the query here and let's take a look at our base record. So the base record contains two fields with the names A and B and the values 1 and 2. The field access expression, a set of square brackets, can be used for projection. And inside those square brackets, you can refer to the field to select from the base record in another set of square brackets. So if we want to project the field B, we append that with a set of square brackets for projection and a set of square brackets to refer to the field name. This syntax is to perform required projection. So what happens when you call a field name that doesn't exist inside the record? In that case, an error is returned. You might conclude that this behavior is equal to when selecting fields from a record using a standard library function. And you're right. Let's take a look at that. So instead of using projection, now we've used the standard library function record.selectFields. And calling a field that doesn't exist inside the record returns exactly the same error. Multiple fields can be selected by separating the field names by commas. And for performing optional projection, all you have to do is add a question mark at the end. So here we have one set of square brackets to perform projection. And inside that set of square brackets, we have the field names that we want to project from that record. Calling a field name that doesn't exist when appending that question mark at the end returns a null and so resolves the error. The same holds true for a standard library function that allows a missing field type parameter. Again, we're looking at the record.selectFields function, and this allows for that missing field type parameter. The error is resolved by adding a null instead. When dealing with tables instead of records, the exact same behavior can be expected. Let's take a look at our base table. We can use the field access expression, a set of square brackets, to project fields from this table, and in another set of square brackets, refer to the columns to select from that table. So let's project the column B. Inside a set of square brackets, we can refer to the column name in another set of square brackets. This is required projection. Calling a column name that doesn't exist returns an error. The same is to be expected for a standard library function, in this case the table.selectColumns function. Multiple columns can be selected by separating the column names with commas. And for performing optional projection, just add the question mark. For standard library functions that allow the missing field type parameter, the error is resolved in exactly the same manner. Projection is an easy to use shorthand with a similar behavior to the standard record or table library functions that allow for that optional missing field type parameter. Personally, I mix the use of projection and the use of standard library functions when coding. Well, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. 
uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.